Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to explore the solution to the 2021 AMC 10B problem 14 and it was also the 2021 AMC 12B number 8. So we've got a circle. Okay, let's draw our circle. I have a tool that lets me create a perfect circle. That's good. I don't have to draw manually and draw a little bit bad. So we've got three spaced, equally spaced parallel lines creating three chord lengths of 38, 38, and 34. What's the distance between adjacent parallel lines? So in this problem, the tricky part of this problem is not only doing whatever math, but drawing the diagram itself is quite tricky, actually. So drawing the diagram, how is it possible to have three chords of like 38, 38, and 34 that can line in a circle? How is this even possible? That's the first step we must take to solve this problem. So first, when I explained this problem, I was like, okay, maybe there's one chord in the, in the this is diameter and there's two chords on the outside here. So at first I was thinking that because that would, that would make sense. Three chords, equally spaced. One is diameter, two are opposite sides. But then that would mean that this, this, there's going to be one chord that's longer than both of the others. But in, the, in our problem, that's not the case because we've got 38, 38, and 34. So there's two longer chords and one smaller chord. So then, then we know that this possibility can't work. So an important fact about circles to keep in mind here is that when we've got a, when we've got a circle, the chord that's the closest distance to the diameter is going to be the largest. So the diameter itself is the largest chord in the circle. And as we go farther and farther away from the diameter, our chord gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So two chords of length 38 and 38, they're going to have to be closer to the diameter than the chord of length 34, along with having them equally spaced. So this is a bit of a confusing. How can we use this condition somehow? We've got three chords. We have to place them in a circle. None of, none of the chords can be in the diameter, because if that were true, then then all three chords would have different lengths, or two of the chords would have to be shorter and have the same length, as we just explored. So what do we really have to do? Well, none of the chords can be diameter, but the, the chord of length 34 has to be farther away from the diameter as the chord of length 38 has to be. So let's say the chord of length 34 is maybe somewhere here. It's just a guess, 34. So now, given that, this, let's just say it's here, we can move it around if needed. So where can the chords of length 38 and 38 go such that they're equally spaced? Well, in order for two chords to have the same length, they have to be equidistant from the diameter. So let's, this is actually not a chord. I'm just gonna draw this line to make it clear. So let's say this, this blue line is a, is a diameter. It's not a chord, it's not any of the chords, it's the diameter. We have to have two chords that are equidistant from this diameter and equidistant from our 34 code. Like the distance between those two chords is the same as the distance between the bottommost chord and the 34 chord. So we can see that we have to place them like this. So this will have to be 38. This will have to be 38. And this bottom one has to be 34. So now we've drawn a diagram, which is the first step to solving the problem, but we're still far from done. So this is the center. So a very important property of chords is that if you draw the from the, the center of the circle and you draw the perpendicular, it will be a perpendicular bisector, so midpoint. So somehow we need to use the fact that this is V19 because it's a perpendicular bisector. The, the center will bisect the chord in the middle. So is there any way we can somehow use that maybe? So a common strategy when we're dealing with chords problems is one, there's actually a power of a point solution to this problem, I believe, but I'm not going to go through that solution in this video, but there's a way to solve it. So when you're dealing with chords, it's always all, all going to be a good idea to maybe use power of point somewhere. But uh, the way that I did it is basically I was saying that we've got perpendicular, we've got 19, so we need, to, we need to relate it. There's only one common length across the whole circle, and that is the radius. So we try to draw radiuses because we discussed this back in the circles class that in circle problems, we want to draw radii because radii are really good and they give us lots of important properties because what's the only length in the circle that's equal everywhere? The radius is equal no matter where you put it in the circle. So this will be all, let's draw all our radii in. Every single radii you can possibly think of that can be useful. So connect every point on the circle to, every significant point in the circle to the center. So we just draw all the radii. 
So really, I have this common length, let's call it R, because it's so powerful, it deserves to get a variable. Let's call them all R. Okay. And just like earlier, let's perpendicular bisect this right here. So this will be 17. Okay. And we can also see that so if this is R, now, now what, what else can we do somehow? We need to see what is the other condition we have not used. Three parallel lines are the distance equally spaced parallel lines. How do we use this condition? How do we find the spacing between the chords? Well, we try to use the variable R because we have the variable R in our diagram. So let's try to incorporate it somehow so we can make it a one variable equation in terms of R only. We don't want to have to define new variables because that's going to make it a bit more messy to deal with. So from here, we can see that to, in order to find the value of R, we can see that we're going to have to try to somehow relate this to our circle. So the, we can actually define, and just to make it a little bit more, maybe easier to understand, what we can do is we can see that we can see that this length here is going to be equal to r squared, the square root of r squared minus 17 squared. Because Pythagorean theorem, r squared is equal to 17 squared plus this distance squared. Okay, now what, uh, what else? Now, we, we can also see that by the Pythagorean theorem, this pink line squared plus 19, this, this bottom line squared is equal to r squared. And meaning that this, this, length, this length here is just going to be equal to the square root of r squared minus 19 squared. So can we relate that somehow to our common distance? Well, we can see that the distances between these two points are going to be equal. Meaning that r squared minus 19 squared times 2 will be equal to r squared minus, sorry, will be equal to 3 times r squared minus 19 squared. So let me explain what this means, why this is true. Because notice that if we just say that the distance between these chords is some length d, let's call this length some length d, then this distance is going to be d by 2, d by 2 by symmetry. And if these are both d by 2, d by 2, from here we can see that this distance will be d2. So that means you can see that r squared minus 19 squared is one third r squared minus 17 squared, since d by 2 is a third of 3d by 2. And then now we've got a one variable equation in terms of all, r. We can solve for r. And we can easily solve for r. From here, we can see that we can, well, how do we do this? We just square both sides, it's a natural thing to do. We square both sides, get rid of the square root, and if you remember from problem two on this test, we don't want to deal with squaring negative numbers, but we don't have to worry about that in this case, because we know that r squared minus 19 squared will be a positive number since r is greater than 19 and r is greater than 17. So you don't want to worry about any of that negative number that you had to worry for number two on the test, which by the way, you should take out the video for. It was a very interesting problem. So back to this problem, we, we want to use this condition. We square both sides and we get r squared minus 17 squared equal to nine times r squared minus 19 squared. And then we simplify our equation. We get r squared minus 289 equal to nine r squared minus 361 times 9, we can just easily evaluate it to be equal to 2349. And then, or actually, there's actually a, a slight trick that you can use that I, I think I, I want to show here for future problems. It doesn't really help that much in this problem, but it's very useful for other problems that you might have. So when you've got a common expression, you can actually help in expanding and simplifying it out, that we can make a substitution. So it's not really necessary in this problem. Like I was just doing, it's still possible to easily solve it without it. But just for the sake of showing this technique for future problems, you can somehow like make your algebra easier if you have this expression that's repeatedly showing up over and over again. The substitution can really help you. So let's just say that I don't know, s is equal to r squared minus 17, minus 17 squared, right? Or 289. Or so let's say r, s r squared minus 361. Then r squared minus 17 squared to r squared minus 289 will just be equal to s plus 72 because r squared minus 361 plus 72 is r squared minus 289. Then we substitute that into our expression to get, this will be s plus 72 will be equal to 9 times s. So now, now you might be thinking why I did this substitution. Because now instead of having to solve for like r squared, we can see that 8s is 72, and that means s is 9. And then we can easily substitute that back to get that r squared is just going to be equal to the square root of 370. Okay, 
And from here, we can find D to be, we can easily find the value of D, the distance we want to find, because we can see that we really just want to find R squared minus three minus D. We want to find D, which is going to be two times R squared minus 19 squared. And R squared minus 19 squared, so that's going to be 370 equal to R squared minus 19. We want to find two times R squared minus 19 squared. Since R squared minus 19 squared is D over two. And from here we see the R squared is 370. So we've got 370 minus 361. The square root of that equal three. So the distance is three times two or six. That is the solution for this problem. Okay, so the key idea, key idea was we've got a circle. So the first step of the problem is slightly tricky. Is actually drawing the diagram. That was the first step. And we think that, okay, how can we have three chords? And that the diameter is the longest chord and the chords as you go out, as you can imagine that if you have a circle, if you imagine that we have a circle, and then as you draw your chords, if you draw your chords here, as you go, as you keep going, moving inwards, if you keep moving inwards, the chords keep getting smaller. So the diameter is the largest chord. And then as you go to the very edge, it just becomes a point. So that was the first main thing they had to notice. And then after you did that, now they get the diagram down. Now the next step was that, okay, we've got perpendiculars and radiuses are very useful when dealing with circles. And remember, we want to draw the, always in circles, you want to draw the important radii. We discussed this back in the circles class. We did several problems using it. Where we, the key insight was to use the radius. So we drew all our radii. We then see our equations. Because now we know the distance, we can relate our distance to our radii. You can set up an equation, you can solve for it, and then we're done. So that was it. And I hope you enjoyed this solution. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.